At first, we did a review about Noctua's NF-A12X25, followed by their s 12 s Then came the Redux lineup with the NF-P12 and S12B. And then we even had a look at Noctua's industrial line, the NF-F12-3000. And you know which one I missed? The NF-F12 Chromex Black, a fan which, funnily enough, was the very first one to enter the studio. But back then I decided not to do a review about it because I didn't have enough comparison fans. And and then I, I, I just forgot about it, so let's fix that. The NFF12 Chromex Black review. Due to it being a Chromex Black fan, the F12 comes in the usual Chromex Black package. A bunch of swappable rubber pieces to give it its extra color flare, a 1cm long PVM cable which makes every man uncomfortable, and a 30cm long PVM extension cable. Then, as it stood as a Noctua fan, we've got the usual Noctua treatment. AAO frame, stepped in a design, inner surface microstructures, a metal bearing shell, and you know, the usual to-do stuff that Noctua does before it kicks out the fan. Compared to any other Noctua fan in the NF lineup, the F12 is definitely the static pressure focus version. While the fan is capable of spinning at up to 1500 rpm, it is able to push around 55 CFM at 2.61 mm of H2O. And to put this into perspective, this is pushing its air quite a lot harder than the notorious NF-A12X25 at 500 rpm less speed. Not, not bad indeed. Although this comes at a significant cost of around 5 CFM. Now looking at these numbers, the NFF12 is very clearly a radiator fan. Sure, it is also able to do something like a case fan, but it is it is truly not its strength. And that's actually a, a really interesting topic because until now, where I, I started to work on the NFF12 review, I was actually heavily disappointed with the NFF12. Based on its raw stats, it should actually be very close to an NF-A12X25, but, and we will get to that in a minute, it isn't in my benchmarks, and all of that starts to make sense now. If we take a look at Noxia's fan overview, which shows which of their fans is good at static pressure versus airflow, we can start to see what happened here. Here we can see that the NFF12 is very good at being a radiator fan, while it is among, if not the, very worst in airflow, which is the most important factor in case cooling. And if you've seen our How We Benchmark Fans video, we do not do a raw case performance test, nor do we do a radiator performance. What we do is like a, a case performance test with a slight tilt towards heat sinks. And if we would assume that the required pressure to cool down a heatsink is about here, our benchmark would be somewhere here. And weirdly enough, by using the most scientifically correct and cutting edge testing method called color comparison, it seems like the NFF12 will lose against Noxia's budget Redux NFS12B line, which it actually did. While studying the NFF12 spin at its peak 1500 RPM, it was able to keep the CPU at 57 degrees C above ambient. And that's a degree behind the S12B. Mm, I love the fact that I did a benchmark about a year ago and uh, had so many other fans in come in between. And now I can verify the result and everything just there fits perfectly together and the whole picture starts to make sense. Looking at the noise to performance benchmarks, the NFF12s are not painting the prettiest picture here either. Sure, they are by far one of the worst fans out there, but considering that Noxia's own lineup is wiping the floor with them, does not make them stand out in the best way. So where does this leave us? Well, the NFF12s are definitely not the base case fans, I think we established this pretty hard today. Considering their insanely high 2.61 mm of H2O, oh, steady pressure, those NFF12s are probably best suited for applications that require a huge amount of static pressure. Radiators, cases that are built like a concrete wall, cases that have three different types of air filtering methods stacked on top of each other, that kind of stuff, you know, the stupid stuff. So to buy or, or not to buy an NFF12, surely not as a case fan, that there were way better candidates out there, like Nokia's own F, 
NFS12A. The only way I see an NFF12 being intelligently used as a, a case fan would be if the thing has like zero airflow. That being said, everything on the F12 seems to be pointing towards radiator fans. Thankfully, we are in the process of creating a global best radiator fan comparison, so they seem to be a perfect candidate for that video. Just not as a scenario where air restriction isn't the biggest obstacle. On the price side, the NFF12s are going for around 22 euros or 22 dollars, which is actually plus minus what an S12A will cost you. So you know, you could make the decision entirely on the use case of the fan and on some weird performance to noise to price comparison. But yeah, I think that will be it for the NFF12. I will not draw any conclusion. For, for now, except for not getting it as a, as a case fan. That's pretty clear by now. I will wait with my conclusion until the radiator fan video is, is finished, because who knows, maybe the F12 can keep up with the A12X25, or if it loses there, it will basically never serve any purpose. Who knows? For today, this will be it. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the NF-A12X25, one of the best fans out there. On a side note, we also have a Discord server now. So if you want to join and organize the biggest airflow with aesthetic pressure public knife fight, that's the place to start. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.